Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful 20th of March, 2024, coming up in the Wednesday edition of the Tuesday Rant of the Krusty Connect podcast, the Toronto Police Service, lame advice in regards to keeping your stuff safe and secure. A possible confidence vote coming tomorrow from the Conservatives and NDPBS in regards to the plight of Hamas, those crazy little terrorists. All that more from the podcast. Please stick around. Listener view discretion may be advised because I might swear, smoke a cigarette or two, make a funny face or an unkind gesture to our leadership. Uh, stick around. See you in a bit. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. Yes, sir. There is no racial bigotry here. There you are all equally working. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast, a Canadian veteran's point of view on political, social, economic issues, and life. Here's Krusty. That's right. Welcome to the Tuesday Rant Wednesday edition. Ladies and gentlemen, I had some technical issues there last night. However, I am back in full swing right now as we speak. And don't forget to click like, subscribe, share this content all over social media platforms. Give me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and just keep sharing Canadian content around. Uh, this podcast is also brought to you in part by and supported by Veterans for Freedom Network. That's right. Stand to Veterans for Freedom. And coming soon, Veterans for Freedom TV. You'll see yours truly on there, spreading the gospel of freedom and Canadian democracy at its finest. Hello, everybody. I'm Krusty Canuck. Thank you for tuning in and uh, giving me a second chance. I was supposed to have an episode up last night. I had some techno issues with my soundboard. Uh, I would record the episode, and it only came out uh, on the microphone from the camera. So it sounded like I was talking into my cell phone when really I'm talking into here. Uh, however, hopefully it's up and running again. Check my settings, all that good stuff. If not, then I'll put the episode up anyway. And if the sound quality is terrible, my apologies. But I have to get the episodes out to all you wonderful people out there. Because I know there's some people that are counting on me to bring content to you every week. To the best of my ability, anyway. Like I say, if you like and hear what you see, click like and subscribe. Share this content all over your social media platforms. And who cares about the swearing and the censorship? Just get the words out there, ladies and gentlemen. So as the title card said in the episode, this Tuesday rant, uh, Toronto Police Service advice, a possible confidence vote coming from the Conservatives and, of course, NDPBS. Now, here's an article that came from City TV a few days ago, uh, I guess because of the crime wave and the crime rates are going up in major cities all over the country. We're having some issues with people getting their cars stolen. So a constable from the Toronto Police Service basically had um, this to say about... <laughs> I, I, I still have a chuckle, even though the story is only a few days old, ladies and gentlemen, it's still a few days old. It's just, what the hell? Okay. Now I played hockey with police officers. I've served with, with guys that left the military, become cops and they're great guys. You know, I'm still in touch with a lot of them. We shoot the breeze once in a while, banter here and there. And I'm just curious to see what they think about some of the advice that these big city uh, officers have been. I've been giving to people. Now, the story is, is that one constable encouraged the citizens to leave their fobs or their keys close to the door. So if someone breaks in, <laughs> it'll be easier for them and it's safe in the long run. Now, we've heard about the trouble of getting people to become police officers, retention, the whole uh, love and hate with police officers because of all this SJW woke BS and the increased budgets that all these cities are proposing to get police officers on the street to keep people safe and secure. But when you have a police officer telling people to make it easier for criminals in the name of safety, you know you've got a problem. I'll cue this video up here for you as all, ladies and gentlemen, just to decide amongst yourselves. It comes from City TV out of Toronto. And, uh, well, like I say, you decide. You know, I'm not going to tell you to suck eggs. I will submit it for your approval. And to see what you think about this <laughs> a buffoonery uh, that is bestowed on every one of us here. I'll just cue it up here. Uh, sorry about that. Yes, here we go. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. The logic that it's, it's going into, I don't know. <laughs> you decide. <laughs> I'm not going to. <coughs> I'm not going to tell you what to think here, but uh, you decide, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. 
Yeah. Now, uh, to talk about a recent story that you did, Michelle, that talked about grab it's grabbing. You've gone viral with this story a yeah. lot on social media and with some surprising advice from a Toronto police officer about how to prevent auto thefts. So can you catch us up here? Yeah, so last month at a community safety meeting in Etobicoke, Toronto police advised residents there that if they have their key fobs for their vehicles in a Faraday pouch, to leave that at the front door so that if thieves are brazen enough to break in, they can just kind of grab it and go. And I believe we have a clip of that original advice, so let's, let's watch what they had to say. To prevent the possibility of being attacked in your home, Some leave your fobs kids. at your front door. Can enter because they're breaking into your home to steal your car. They're, they don't want anything else. A lot of them that they're arresting have guns on them, and they're not toy guns, they're real guns. They're loaded. I mean, he's right, but a lot yeah. of people are upset saying, what? Like, are you giving up on trying to catch these guys? Like, it's it's creating quite a fear. fear. It is. And, and I want to explain a little bit of the context as well, because what they're saying is if you put your key in a Faraday pouch, this is like basically a signal blocker. I'm not a tech expert, but some of these it's, thieves, it's a heavy pouch. Exactly. Yeah. And some of these thieves are, are doing relay attacks. So they're using a device. They're coming in and they are then extending the signal of your fob to steal your car. But if they are not able to use that device because you've got it in a Faraday pouch and they're brazen enough to break in, police are saying just minimize the contact. A lot of them have guns. Definitely. And it's terrorizing people. Absolutely. But I think, you know, also we have to, and, and the federal government is making moves to close ports, for example, so you can't export these vehicles to the countries where there's a market for them. So there, are, it's a very complex situation, but one that is certainly out of control right now. Absolutely out of control. And if if we're talking about um, leaving your keys at the front door in a Faraday pouch, and I know in, in York region, uh, we had a family in Unionville say police actually gave them door stoppers to prevent door kick break-ins. Mm -hmm. This is out of control. Definitely. And frightening. So mm -hmm. frightening. And we've heard many stories. We've covered many stories. Thank you so very much, Michelle. Thank you. Yeah, that was the fine people at City TV. I remember when City TV used to be a decent channel. Uh, they used to have, uh, you know, the great movies on nine o'clock. You know, you could hear swearing after nine, 9 p.m. Ooh, and then every Sunday afternoon, they used to have City TV's not so great movies where they come on a really bad, bad movie and you have to sit and watch and laugh. But anyway, I'm digressing here. So that's the advice that the Toronto Police is giving. Now, there apparently there's some backstepping and there's some rebuttals there. However, if you have a trained police constable or anybody senior in the Toronto Police Service and they're giving you that kind of advice, you know it's a goddamn clown world. You know things aren't working out and you know things aren't things aren't going great. You know, who in the right mind would encourage you to lay your property out on the on your porch or on your step or your veranda or your patio and say make it easier for criminals. Uh, I'll just drop my wallet in the street so somebody can pick it up and Hopefully, in the kindness of their own heart, they'll give it back to me, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's, you see where we're, where we're heading here, ladies and gentlemen? It's just a, a total shit show. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, you're back to the Tuesday Rant Wednesday edition for this 20th of March 2024 on the Krusty Connect podcast. We've covered uh, the Toronto Police Service lame advice, a confidence vote in the works, and the NDP BS. I'm your host, Krusty Connect, and thank you for sticking around all this time. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, if you like and hear what you see, please click like and subscribe. Share this content all over your social media platforms. Help a guy out self and uh, get Canadian content out there before it gets censored to poop there too. If you feel like donating, there'll be links in the description for you to follow. If you feel like donating, every little bit helps too. I do put some work in this podcast, ladies and gentlemen, so a couple dollars here and there does help go a long way. Like I've said in my last episodes, my wife and I, we've had to really dig into our savings to grab a furnace. Um, if you want to help us cover the cost, that would be great. If not, that's fine. This podcast is still free to you to view. I just really appreciate some donations in the near future just to help me along my way here. But that's up to you, my fine viewers. That's up to you, my wonderful people. And thank you once again to my fellow uh, Rumblers. There's some new Rumblers out there that have uh, subscribed. So thank you guys very much. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you kindly. And I also want to thank some of the kind words I had received in my last video too. Keep them coming. Keep the comments. Keep the thumbs up. Spread this all over the place because the more you spread it, more Canadians get to see it, more Americans, 
from Australian friends and my pod beaners, all that good stuff. So please, uh, please keep sharing and subscribing and commenting, ladies and gentlemen. So today, Pierre Polyev uh, mentioned the confidence vote he's going to uh, put in, or a non-confidence vote, sorry, that he's going to put in tomorrow. So we'll stay glued to the TV sets for that. Uh, basically, all I can do is summarize the fact that if there is a non-confidence, then uh, Trudeau liberals will be gone. They'll be out. They'll be done like dinner. They'll be toast. Kaput. It's up. Pushing up the daisies. All that good stuff. You know, but uh, we'll have to see. Because there's a lot of people still holding under their jobs in Parliament. Because there's a big raise coming too. Don't forget, April 1st, carbon tax goes up. Pay raises go up for the MPs. Our taxes go up again too. You know? Some of them think they're doing us a big favor because they cut two cents off uh, the purchase of, of alcohol, but there's still another two cents tax in that too. So every dollar is an extra two cents of tax going on to that. So you buy a two for a beer, 36 bucks. Oh, excuse <coughs> me, do the math, ladies and gentlemen. And I see the Twitter feeds exploding in regards to what Pierre Polyev is saying and to what Jagmeet Singh is saying and just all the BS when it comes to this political, uh, <laughs> this political dumpster fire that we're seeing in this country right now. Okay. Now, hypothetically, I would love to see a non-confidence vote. I would love to see that. But it's going to cost taxpayers a few more million bucks to get this campaign on the go, to bring a new prime minister in, and all this other BS that goes with it. Uh, do I personally think that Pierre Polyev might do a better job? Yeah, I think he will. But then again, he's also a career politician. And I've yet to see any of these politicians speak out against the pay raise, regardless if they have to take it or not. I've never seen any counterpoints or counter gestures or anyone stand up in the House of Commons saying, uh, no, we don't need a pay raise. We need to get things focused here. We need to get things done here and get things done there. Okay. So while all this crap is going on in regards to money and more carbon taxes and the plight of auto theft in every major city in this country, uh, we got politicians squandering um, and just deflecting. Right. In a perfect world, I'd like to see an election now and get rid of the, the, the Trudeau brand of the Liberal Party, because you and I can both agree that there's no liberalism with them whatsoever. OK, look at everything that has gone on in the past couple of years with the trucker convoy, with the coots for there's two guys still in jail over that, too. Right. The fines, the legislations, the criminal charges because of mandates, because of fear and safety. Right? We're still hearing issues about the whole bank accounts being locked out. There's a couple of good soldiers right now that are suing the federal government because of the whole lockout issue. Right, Veterans, fellow veterans such as myself. Right, so that, gets, that gets you in perspective on how things are going right now, ladies and gentlemen. In regards to how you personally feel about uh, the government, there's a lot of Canadians out there that are dissatisfied with the government. They will vote Pierre in because he's something different and he's got some better ideas. No one's going to vote the NDP in because, well, they're just all whiny little brats. And I'll be getting to that shortly, too, on how much uh, whiny little brats they are when it comes to supporting what's going on in the Middle East. But I'll get to that shortly. But when it comes to the whole confidence vote, non-confidence vote, uh, <laughs> let's hope. But you got to be careful because the Bloc Québécois, they want what's going to benefit them. They don't want what's going to benefit the country. But they fail to realize, too, that if the country does not benefit from anything, i.e. debt, inflation, infighting, lack of defense, then La Belle Provence does not benefit either. So if there is a confidence vote, if there is a vote that's pushed forward to, to the pe people, <coughs> if Parliament says, okay, we've had it with your governance, you suck, all right? Bring the governor general in, and I, I would say get rid of her position too, because that's just way overrated. And that's just my opinion, ladies and gentlemen. All right? There, an election shall be called, and time will tell what's going to happen. Uh, my good friends, the Northern Perspective Radio Reaction, Clyde, do something, Vesper, and Marty up north. I've listened to what they've had to say about the back and forth, the bantering, and I think we're all in agreement that we need a new regime. We need a new new leader. Now, I'm not going to sit and put faith in every politician that I meet because politicians, just like you and I, they're not gods, they're not the elite. Some have degrees, some have qualifications here, 
Some have had businesses, some were police officers, some were ex-soldiers, right? But a lot of them in the past five years, I would say the past five years, a lot of them are missing uh, <laughs> a lot of key key figures, a lot, a lot of key ideas. And a lot of them aren't reality-based anymore, especially when you watch the Liberal Party, you watch Christopher Freeland go back and forth, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> that woman's really out of touch, honestly. You know, crack looks at her and goes, wow. <laughs> Holy shit, you know. <laughs> but I, I think you get my point, ladies and gentlemen. You've heard me ramble on about Christopher Freeland, about Trudeau, about the liberal brand, and it's all a farce. Let's just hope uh, all these so-called educated officials get a chance to sit down and have a piece of fucking humble pie. And I hope to God it tastes really, really good. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, you are back to the Tuesday Rant Wednesday edition with the Krusty Canuck. Yours truly, uh, we went over the Toronto Police Service lame advice in regards to keeping your car safe, just leaving the keys out for them, you know, and a confidence vote or non-confidence vote. And of course, NDP BS. That's right. I'm your host, Krusty. And uh, if you like and hear what you see there, ladies and gentlemen, please click like, subscribe, share this content over social media platforms. Had a pretty busy week. So I'm trying to keep everybody updated as best as I can. There will be an episode again this weekend, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm working on trying to get three times a week. So you'll be seeing yours truly three times a week on the Krusty Connect podcast. There'll be no more Tuesday rants, but there will be three episodes a week. So Keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yes. I, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All that good stuff. But uh, pay attention uh, to the Greedy page and my Facebook page, too, for updates when that happens. Like I said, uh, this is episode 267 of the Tuesday Rant. And uh, I've got a little clip here from Rebel News uh, from the Ezra LeVant Show. And regards how you feel about independent media, ladies and gentlemen, regards how you feel about uh, citizen journalism, they have come a long way in the past five years to get information out to the masses um, with the likes of people like Northern Perspective. Husband and wife team, analyze videos, bring the information out, radio reaction. You know, ex-British, or well, he's still British, but he lives in Canada, does his thing. He gets information out there. Clyde does do something. He does great work. Daniel Boardman, you know, uh, Marty up north, Vesper. All these independent guys bringing information out to you, the wonderful masses, so you can pick and decide which is good, which is bad, whatever, to think for yourself is the way it should be. Because we've seen how mainstream media has ruined a lot of things here, probably because they get government handouts, which is taxpayer money, so you're not going to bite the hand that feeds you, okay? But what's feeding all of us here is getting the information out to you the best of our ability, the best of our knowledge, and sharing our opinions. Oh, and I also want to reiterate, too, uh, last week's episode, when I was criticizing the military brass for some of their really stupid decisions, okay, I said they're trading uh, pragmatism for wokeism. Well, I mean, the other way around. Anyway, what I meant to say was they are substituting wokeism and progressivism, okay, instead of practicality and pragmatism practicality and pragmatism works wokeism and progressivism does not it's a shit show it's borderline marxist and it's lazy fucking leadership so just there's a correction there from last week's episode anyway <laughs> carry on i'm digressing again so we're getting to the ndp bs uh that's been going on now they uh, passed a motion to recognize uh palestine as a state that's fine. I believe Palestine and Israel should exist regardless of the biblical implications, historical implications, what have you. Okay. And we all saw the footage on October 7th. <coughs> what happened? <coughs> we all heard stories left and right, right and left, center from Israel, from Palestine, from Israeli Canadians, from Palestinian Canadians. And enough is enough. Okay. I want to say, to viewers of this who might disagree with me, keep the dirty war over there and leave this country alone. That's my opinion because I've seen enough fighting to last a, few, a good few lifetimes. I don't want to see anymore. And I don't want that kind of war coming here. 
because I can tell you this right now, based on my experience and the people I know in my circle, people I've talked to, people I've shared this podcast with, letters, emails, all that good stuff. There's a lot of vets in this country that are not going to tolerate any kind of shit. Doesn't matter what side you're on. Doesn't matter what you believe in. Doesn't matter how you feel about this country or that country or that group of people or this group of people or this flag or that flag. They stand by this flag. So keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Just keep that in mind. So anyway, here is a clip from the Ezra Levant show. And you'll listen to the likes of Heather Robertson and Matthew Green from the NDP and where they stand. And you, my wonderful audience, I would like you to make a, a value judgment on how they should operate in Parliament. You know, it's just, it's, uh, <laughs> it's getting ridiculous on how some of these leaders and these so-called politicians stand up for the working class hero and how they stand up for this and stand up for that. And they can't get their shit together for what they should be standing up for i.e. the Canadian taxpayer, i.e. the people that they represent. Right? You said me ramble on about how uh, not Well, see if these NDPers understand that. And so the Liberals got behind it. But really the whole thing felt like a student's council election, including the costume party, by the way, you had all these MPs wearing oh, the sure. Palestinian kafia, that scarf, as if they were, I don't know, costume parties or something. Uh, here's a new Democrat member of parliament from Edmonton. I, I know Edmonton pretty well. I lived there for years. I'm from Alberta originally. Uh, she says her job is to represent Gaza. Take a listen. And I'm going to be coming back every single day into this House of Commons and demanding the rights for Palestinian people. That was Heather McPherson. And here's Matthew Green of the NDP. This is quite something. He basically says, Hamas, they're not that bad. The Jews are worse. Take a look at him. Mr. Speaker, there's been lots of conversations in the House around trying to find balance. And in fact, the Conservative position has somehow tried to make this whole thing, uh, all of the atrocities, all of the murders, all the deaths, as though it's solely Hamas's fault. So in asking for balance, not once have they acknowledged that the Hamas doesn't own F-16 fighter jets. Hamas doesn't own 2,000 pound bombs that have been dropped on civilian populations. Hamas didn't force people from the north to the south and then threaten to invade Rafah. Hamas didn't bomb schools and hospitals. So I would ask through you, Mr. Speaker, to the honorable member, in finding balance and seeking balance from some of the ridiculous assertions from the Conservative caucus, could the honorable member please reflect on what the imbalance of power and the asymmetry of power and military might looks like in that region and what the legacies of settler colonialism looks like here in this country? Yeah, you know, looking at, at, at these uh, folks just absolutely debase themselves and can And you know, I'll leave this... Uh video in my description for you all to follow ladies and gentlemen <coughs> it goes on for a few more minutes it's a great episode and like i say, i'll leave this uh description on uh, correction i'll leave this in the description for you ladies and gentlemen now you heard matthew green ramble on now did he say palestinians i watched that thing three times on my cell phone and to queue it up here and he didn't say Palestinians. He said Hamas, 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 Hamas. He talk about the innocent Palestinian civilians. No, he talked about the the Jewish firepower, the Israeli firepower. Granted, they've got a mobile, <laughs> they've got a great military. Okay, mandatory two year service when you reach a certain age, because they're constantly being attacked. Now, regardless of how you feel about Zionism, or the Israeli country, or this country or that country. Like I said earlier, both countries have the right to exist. It's just a matter of them trying to get along and try to figure the shit out rather than trying to kill each other, okay? But that Matthew Green is elected official. So is Heather Robertson. She represents Edmonton, okay? So if you happen to be watching this show there, you two, pay attention, pay attention. Listen carefully, okay? Yes, yes. Fuck off. 
take your virtue, take your victimhood and your stance and represent Canadians. Okay? Represent Canadians. I'll ask again, ladies and gentlemen, did anybody hear Mr. Matthew Green say Palestinians? Palestine. No, he talked about Hamas. And oh my God, you're, you're hurting Hamas. Oh my God, you have F-16 fighter jets against Hamas. Oh my God. What was Hamas doing October 7th? What did they do? Flying in in paragliders and those other rotation glider things on little, little trikes there. Grabbing people, shooting at people, killing kids, raping women, raping teenage girls. And you're so impassioned about defending Hamas. One could call you a traitor, Matthew. One could call you a traitor, Heather. I understand the plight of human beings. I understand the chaos. I understand the carnage. I understand the blood. And I've seen it. It's not sexy. It's not romantic. It's devastating. But now you're giving Israel a hard time for hurting Hamas. Is there overkill? Sure, there's overkill in every war. Is there overkill here? Yeah, there is overkill. But Hamas attacked Israel. It wasn't Palestine attacking Israel. It was Hamas, a terrorist group. Okay? NDP, you guys are working, supposed to be representing the working class, and you're not. You're perpetuating the woke mandates. You're perpetuating the virtue mandates. I can almost goddamn guarantee if anybody picked you up and dropped you in a goddamn war zone, you would have no effing idea what to do, would you? You need someone to save you. Help me. You would need somebody like Israel to come and get your sorry asses or somebody like our American friends to come and get your sorry asses or our British friends. Can you rely on our Canadian troops? Hmm? You represent and you are in cahoots with a party that has decimated our ability to defend ourselves. And yet you want to sit in parliament there every day and fight for Gaza. And fight for Hamas. But you won't fight for Canada. Why? It's not lucrative enough. Come this 1st of April, you, your party, and your backbenchers alike, and defense critics, and you know foreign affairs critics, you'll be going up to $202,000 a year in salary. But you don't want to stand up for Canada. You want to stand up for Gaza or you want to stand up for Ukraine or for this group here or that group there. While Canadian taxpayers such as myself pay your fucking salary. So let's get our priorities in order here, ladies and gentlemen. To you, my viewers, my fans alike, I highly suggest that you send some emails and actually telephone, uh, telephone, your MPs. And I don't care what riding you're in. I don't care what where you sit in the political fence. Telephone them. Tell them your concerns. Make them tiptoe around things rather than us tiptoe around them. That's not the way it should be. They should be fucking working for us. And it doesn't matter if they're conservative, liberal, NDP, Le Bloc, or independent, or the Book of My Shoe Rhinoceros Party. Okay? Taxation's going up again. Their salaries are going up, and <laughs> there's going to be a lot of hurting Canucks out there. And I'm tired of eating humble pie for them. They should be eating the fucking humble pie for us. It's that simple. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, I have been Krusty Canuck on this beautiful 20th of March, 2024. I wish nothing but good things for you all out there. Once again, I remind you, if you like and hear what you see, please click like and subscribe. Share this content all over your social media platforms, right? Get the word out there. Let's beat C11, C36, C63, and whatever woke mechanisms out there that are supposed to hold us back from being ourselves and speaking our fucking minds. 
as whatever good lords out there or up there have intended for us to do. Do what you can to help you out in these trying times, ladies and gentlemen. I know things are going to be tough. Uh, I know my wife and I are going to be pinching our pennies big time to keep things in check. But, you know, don't hesitate to give someone a hand. Don't hesitate to help your neighbors out. Uh, spring is coming. It is spring. I guess yesterday was the official first day of spring. However, you know, the weather is getting better. Keep your spring cleaning in check. Cut your grass and help your neighbors out and try to do your do the best you can with what you got. You know, we will find the light in this manufactured darkness. And let's hope for great things. So do what you can to help you out in these trying times. And like I always say, ladies and gentlemen, humanity and merit wins the day. And I'll see you this weekend. Bye for now. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. This has been another episode of the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Stay sane and thank you for listening. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Slap and tickle for your pickle and your wallet and your sanity. <laughs>